Welcome back to the Guide Exile. In this video, we're going to be covering the following topics. Now that we've seen all of the damage types that can occur, let's talk about some of the ways that we can gear up and defend against them. Gear in Path of Exile comes into multiple layers, and the primary layer comes in three different main flavors of implicit defenses that are found on gear. These are Armor, Evasion, and Energy Shield. Armor Implicit Gear is the strength-based attribute defense. Armor will only mitigate physical damage from attacks or spells, and the damage reduction is calculated by the following formula. As we can see, the higher the hit, the less that is mitigated. This is because armor has diminishing returns. Armor is most effective for small to medium hits from general enemies rather than large hits from bosses, provided they are dealing physical damage. Evasion Implicit Gear is the dexterity-based attribute defense. Evasion provides a chance to evade enemy attacks, but not spells. This means with evasion you can avoid all damage types and status ailments, as long as they are attacks. Chance to evade is calculated by comparing your evasion rating to the enemy's accuracy rating. Critical strikes can also be avoided. An initial hit is rolled against the defender's evasion rating. If it succeeds, another roll is made to see if the critical strike chance succeeds. If this second roll fails, the resulting hit is non-critical. Evasion has a low cap of 5% chance to evade, and a top end cap of 95% chance to evade. However, evasion is not purely based on chance. It has entropy, wherein eventually you will get hit no matter what. Every time attack is evaded, its chance to evade is added to an invisible counter. Once that counter reaches a value of 100, the player is struck by the incoming attack and the counter is reset. The second roll to critical strike chance is not added to this counter. This means that your lucky streak of avoiding hits won't go on forever. Energy Shield is the intelligence-based attribute defense. This defense resides visually on top of the health pool and protects from all types of damage aside from chaos, unless uniques used or chaos inoculation is taken. Energy Shield offers no forms of reduction or evasion, but rather provides the character with a larger effective health pool. Main mechanics involve Energy Shield has separate mechanics from life in that life regeneration, recovery, gain, and leech will not affect it. Energy Shield will recharge on its own after 2 seconds of recovery where no damage is taken. If damage is taken during recharge, it will be interrupted and the recovery timer will start again. Now, by taking the Chaos Inoculation Keystone in the Passive Tree, one can convert their life pool to 1 and become immune to Chaos damage. This in turn makes your Energy Shield your main life pool. Other keystones such as Zealot's Oath and Ghost Reaver can be taken to have life regeneration and leech applied to the character's energy shield. Now gear can appear with one or two of these primary defenses on it, which are referred to as hybrid armor pieces. They will have the required attributes and socket color affinities of the respective defense types that are on it. Aside from the primary implicit defenses, there are some other major types of defenses that exist in Path of Exile. The first of these are your resistances. As mentioned before, elemental and chaos damage are some of the more difficult damages to mitigate, as there is a hard cap on how much resistance you can have to them. Resistances have a cap of 75%, but can be raised by flasks such as a ruby flask, the passive tree, and uniques. This is why notables like barbarism, which provide plus one to maximum resistance, are powerful. Damage against resistances is calculated in the following manner. As we can see, it's a linear function, so we aren't affected by diminishing returns. Resistance is obtained from implicit and explicit properties on gear. It is a necessity to be capped at 75% resistances if you plan on doing endgame content. As you progress through the game difficulties, you will have resistance penalties opposed upon you. Normal, there is no penalty. Cruel, there is a negative 20 to all resistances, including chaos. Merciless, there is a negative 60 to all resistances, including chaos. This means you will need to have a total resistance of 135% for each element to be capped in Merciless difficulty. The character defense screen shows your active resistance on the left, while the uncapped resistance is shown in parentheses on the right. Uncapped resistances are basically your resistance totals after they've exceeded the resistance cap. If you happen to get Elemental Weakness cursed, it will subtract from your total resistance that in the parentheses rather than the 75% cap. Curses can be applied by enemies or as modifiers in endgame maps. If you, however, enter a zone that has minus maximum elemental resistances, this will be subtracted from the 75% cap 
reducing your maximum elemental resistance. This only occurs in endgame maps, so you shouldn't have to worry about it until then. Dodge is unlike Evasion, where the roll is completely pseudo-random to avoid the hit, and is not entropy based. Meaning that dodge hits can be chained indefinitely if you are that lucky. Dodge has no lower cap, but has an upper cap of 75%. Dodge comes in two different forms, dodge attack and dodge spell. Dodge can be acquired from the passive tree via acrobatics and phase acrobatics, as well as ascendancies. It can also be found on numerous unique items such as Itziri's steps, or on flasks such as the quartz flask. Block is a means of damage avoidance like dodge and evasion, and like dodge, it is pseudo-random and has no entropy effects. It has no lower cap and an upper cap of 75%, which can be increased via unique items. It comes in two forms, block attacks and block spells. Block attacks can be attained by using just a shield, a staff, or dual wielding weapons, which provides a hidden 15% block chance, as well as percentage block chance from the passive tree, ascendancies, and unique items. Block spells is not provided as an implicit block, like block attacks with shields or weapons, and must be obtained by other methods. Block spells can be acquired from the passive tree, ascendancies such as gladiator that provides 100% of block chance applied to spells, and unique items that apply a percentage of your block chance to spell block. Endurance charges supplement armor in physical reduction. Charges are temporary stackable buffs that are represented by glowing orbs that circle the character. Endurance charges are orange and are associated with strength. Each endurance charge provides 4% flat physical reduction as well as 4% to all elemental resistances. This reduction is very strong, as the 4% is always a 4% reduction regardless of the hit size, helping with physical reduction against large hits. Endurance charges are mainly gained through the use of the skill Enduring Cry, but can also be gained many other ways via curses or ascendancies. By default, every character has a maximum charge limit of 3 for each charge type, other charges being power charges and frenzy charges. More charges can be acquired via the passive tree, unique items such as Death's Door, or by quest reward. Fortify, like Endurance Charges, is a temporary buff that is gained through the use of a skill that provides 20% mitigation of all incoming damage. This makes it one of the most valuable buffs to maintain on any character. Fortify can be acquired via use of a support on an attack based skill gem or by ascendancies like the Champion, who has permanent Fortify. One of the best ways to keep up Fortify is to attach it to an attack based movement skill. In this way, you are consistently hitting enemies while moving from pack to pack. Curses are simply area of effect skill gems which weaken enemies. These can be self cast, supported by a cast when damage taken, or supported by a blasphemy gem that turns the curse into an AoE aura. There are many offensive and defensive curses, but the main of defensive curses to look out for are Enfeeble, which reduces the enemy's chance to hit, and makes the enemies deal less damage, as well as reducing their critical strike chance and multiplier. Temporal Chains slows enemy movement and attack speed, while also increasing duration based ailments on them. Characters by default can only apply one curse at a time unless Whispers of Doom are taken from the passive tree, and unique items or certain corrupted items are used to allow for one more curse. Curses are less effective on bosses, making them a weaker solution for boss damage, but greatly increase your defensive layer on regular monsters. A good leveling curse is Warlord's Mark, as it provides both life and mana leech, as well as the chance to gain endurance charges on kill, giving you kind of a double whammy of defenses there. Now, Mind Over Matter is more of a defense that is build specific and must be really built around. Mind Over Matter is a keystone that is taken in the passive tree or acquired by certain unique items, in which the character takes 30% of all incoming damage from mana before it is taken from life. If the character does not have any mana, the remaining damage will be deducted from life. Here we get a clean 30% reduction and effective life increase, similar to Energy Shield, but we must be careful in that if we run out of mana from taking damage, we could be in trouble for performing offensive attacks or movement skills. This is why Mind Over Matter must be built around to make effective use of the mechanic. Now, as mentioned previously, flasks are very important to the success of a character, and in Path of Exile, flasks provide not only resource recovery, but offensive and defensive options. Important flasks to look for and work into most builds are the following defense utility flasks. These can be thought of as powerful cooldown skills or even permanent buffs if you're recharging them quickly enough. Granite flasks are very powerful while leveling as they provide a very large amount of base armor and mitigate very well during that leveling period. Jade flasks provide a flat 3000 evasion, which is very strong for evasion stacking builds. 
Basalt flasks are probably the best flask to have on an endgame character, as they provide a flat 20% physical reduction, which is like having another 5 endurance charges. Quartz flasks provide 10% attack and spell dodge, as well as phasing allowing you to reposition and move through enemies. Stib Knights are very powerful in that they provide 100% increased evasion if you're an evasion build, but also drop a smoke cloud on, on use which blinds the enemy making them less accurate and giving them a less chance of hitting you. And finally, a Quicksilver, it doesn't provide defensive bonuses, but it does provide increased movement speed and allows you for quick repositioning and getting out of sticky situations. Now, a slightly complicated defense and sustain mechanic is Life Leech. I'll not go into the specifics on how this one works, but will give the broad overview. Life Leech works like it does in most other games where if you hit an enemy, you will recover a portion of that damage as life. In its current state, Life Leech has a leech rate cap. That is, leeched life can only recover at a certain rate determined by your maximum life and some other data. So as your damage output increases, your total leech life exceeds the recovery rate of your leech cap, so it makes it more like a life flask that's just slow. This is what makes ascendancies such as the Duelist Slayer, which grants double life leech cap and leech does not stop once life is full, and keystones such as Vol Pact, which life leech applies instantly, but you have no life regeneration, very strong. Life Leech can also be applied to Energy Shield via the Keystone Ghost Reaver. Another form of Life Leech is Life Gain on Hit. This can be gained in small amounts from the Passive Tree, Support Gems, or Implicit Properties and Weapons. It's considered much weaker than Leech as it requires heavy investment and many fast hits to get the same amount of life return. Of course, mentioned last, as it is the last buffer between your character and death, is Life. Main sources of base life, that is the number that is modified by percentage modifiers, include gear affixes, plus to maximum life, and the strength abute, which is plus to maximum life per X amount of strength. And unique items such as Combs Heart, which give a flat 500 life. Percentage modifiers to life can be acquired from the passive tree and unique gear such as Belly of the Beast. It is always best to try and get as much life as possible, that is, of course, as long as you're not running a Chaos Inoculation character. Just know, regardless of all the defenses you stack, you will still get one shot at one point. Now finally, I just want to talk a little bit about weapons. Weapons, similar to armor types, come in a few different forms. All weapons have implicit properties and can always be used with attack-based skill gems. Not all weapons will benefit spell-based gems, since certain weapon types cannot roll spell-based explicit mods. Weapon classes include the following. Now it is important to note here that bow users also get a quiver, and two-handed users do not get anything at the moment. This means that a bow user does get extra stats that a two-handed melee user does not. Now it is important to note that if you are an attack-based build, you will have to worry about accuracy. Aim for around 85% plus accuracy rating once you reach the endgame. Attack-based builds can also take resolute technique from the passive tree so that their attacks never miss, but then they can never deal critical strikes. Another little hidden gem is that when you dual wield, you gain a hidden 10% more attack speed, 15% additional block chance, and 20% more attack physical damage. Again, the biggest thing to note is what weapon types your skill gem can use. This will determine the base types of weapons you're going to be looking for. If you instead are using a spell, you will generally want to be using a dagger, scepter, or wand with spell explicit properties.